these examples. So let's look at the first process, which is this use of series processes. Uh, the problem I'm specifically referring to is there's a lot of use of rastering tools in process flows, which give rise to a lot of cost and throughput issues. Rastering tools are tools that go back and forth, obviously. So there's a lot of use of rastering tools, particularly in, in lithography. For example, this is a structure I showed this morning that's made in our, actually made in my research group. And this is a microfluidic channel, which then leads to a nanofluidic channel, which then leads to, as I showed this morning, a molecular pore. And the molecules go through, and you can actually read them between these two electrodes here. Here's the actual structure. Trouble is, making this thing involves um, e-beam lithography techniques, which you have to, where you have to raster the e-beam back and forth as you create the structure. So there's throughput issues when you talk about, OK, how manufacturable are all these things. So you have to worry about series processes. And there's ways out of this, and people have already thought of them and are already looking at them. And um, so don't despair. There's a lot of clever people thinking of ways of getting out of this. One way to get out of it is lithography, which remember we said was pattern transfer, and which I just said can involve series processes, like rastering, to create the pattern. One way out of it is to use a plain old embossing. So one way out of it is, is in, instead of having a tool that rasters back and forth to create the pattern, have something that literally imprints the pattern. And that's embossing. And uh, we have one of those tools in our facility, and they're pretty darn neat. Depending on the particular uh, stamp that you make, you can get down to nanoscale structures. 